Hi everyone, I've been going through a bunch of the comments and requests that have been coming in on my website, drswanda.com, and individuals have been asking me about what books I recommend for people to read that are related to science. So today, I'm going to give you my top five recommendations of books you could look into and that you may enjoy. Now, there are a lot of different books out there related to science that I have read. I spend more money at the bookstore than I'd like to admit, but today I'm just going to give you five. Quick, brief overview, top five, here we go. First book is called Hype by Dr. Nina Shapiro. Um, if you haven't heard of her, you should go look her up because she's pretty awesome. In Hype, she really breaks down a lot of the science and misinformation that the media construes about diets and healthy living, and she gives you some tips that you can use to incorporate into your own lifestyle, if that's what you're aiming for, that are rooted in science. So go check her out. She's awesome. Book number one. Book number two is called House on Fire. This is by William Farage. And it's really relevant right now, actually, because this book talks about the eradication of smallpox, uh, specifically in Africa. But right now we're trying to eradicate COVID-19. So there's no better way to see like what was going on on the ground than in the book that he wrote about him being literally on the ground a few decades ago eradicating smallpox. So he goes through some personal stories about him and his family being able to move around and then about different technologies that were coming out for administering those smallpox vaccines and then how there was actually like not so much hesitancy in order for the, the vaccines to be uptaken. And um, I think it's a great read and it really gives a good um, you know, information into what we need to do in order to eradicate COVID-19 in the future. So book number two. Book number three is called A Cure Within, and this is by Neil Canavan. And this book is a little bit more technical, I will say. Well, the first two books, I think that individuals who don't have a scientific background will be fine to understand. Um, this book specifically goes into looking at cancer cells and using our immune system in order to destroy them. So it goes into some of the really basic research that's ongoing, so still taking place at, at research institutes, on the bench, hasn't moved into clinical trials yet, and then slowly works its way up to you know where this is currently at now. So it gets into the pretty nitty gritty, there's some images in there of actual like people's lab notebooks, but if you do get this book, you'll be able to see some nice images that are drawn out about kind of what pathways these individuals, these different researchers are looking into. And it's broken down in chapters by the researcher. So you can actually understand what that researcher was studying at that time. Um, and then those images are kind of like what images that I draw up on the whiteboard, just a little sketch of what they're hoping to do. And uh, yeah, so that's book number three. Book number four is called The First Cell, and this is by Azra Raza. And this book, I think I was drawn to it early on in the beginning is because, well, this book is also talking about cancer. In the beginning, I really liked, as a researcher, how the author really talked about Sometimes we don't always learn the most from what succeeds in research, but we actually learn the most from what fails. And constantly the author is talking about you know, failures that are occurring in the cancer research world. How you know, we still don't have a cure for many types of cancers and goes into some personal stories of her own um, battles of cancer in her own family. So I think that this is a great book in order to get both that personal and that research uh, experience and you get to learn a lot about the oncology field. So that is book number four. And the fifth book, although none of these books are in any specific order of how I recommend, I do recommend this one first because 
it is a very powerful story. So this is called The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks by Rebecca Skloot. And she is actually a journalist. So she writes this in a very understandable way and actually in kind of like an investigative type of way where we're looking at the background of this really predominant cell line that's used in research called HeLa cells. And those HeLa cells were actually taken from a woman called Henrietta Lacks. And then this tells the story of how those cells kind of became the first cell that scientists were able to grow in culture. And then it kept growing and growing and growing. And they were able to use it for so many different research purposes. And this goes into the background of her family that her family had no idea that this was going on. So I've probably given away like way more than I should have in this video, but you should check this out. I really give this book to a lot of individuals for gifts who are either in or not in the scientific field just because of the way that it's written and the way that you can easily understand the, the processes that are ongoing throughout this timeline of when Henrietta Lacks' cells were taken up until current time of how they're still being used and what her family is going through. So, book number five. Those are my top five recommendations of some books you can read. I know the holidays are coming up. If people wanna get a book for their friend or their family member who are an avid reader, I highly recommend any or all of these. So leave your comments down below on what scientific books you like to read and subscribe in order to get updates on new videos that I have upcoming in the next few weeks. And I can't wait to talk to you all soon. Thanks, bye.